It's a beautiful day in the aerodrome, a beautiful day for a passenger, won't you be mine? Can't you be mine? Welcome to a beautiful Monday afternoon here in California. It's been a couple of months since I've been up and flying, so I'm just going to be going up and doing some pattern work, uh, maybe fly over to the practice area if I can figure out where that is here at Livermore, uh, do some basic maneuvers, just kind of, you know, get some proficiency back. I'm still current. Uh, my currency expires in 33 days, so that's, that's not an issue, but uh, just kind of want to make sure I'm still proficient. Just, just a quick check, you know. Brush off some of those cobwebs. That. Be careful with these cars on either side. Nothing more towers, Cessna 733, Bravo Echo holding short, runway 25 right. I uh, would like to stay in right close traffic, please. There were 733, Bravo Echo, Livermore Tower, right close traffic approved, wind 3409 or runway 25 right cleared for takeoff. 25 right cleared for takeoff, 3 Bravo Echo. Alright, takeoff power. Airspeed is alive. This more towers, Cali 9006, Mike is uh, 10 miles south with Alpha. Uh, Alpha. Good morning, 9006, Mike, Livermore Tower. Good afternoon. Did you have a runway preference? Uh, if I could take 25 uh, right would be great. Number 9006, Mike Roger, enter left base, runway 25 right, report 2 miles south of the field. Hitting left base for 25 right, entering, uh, responding 2 miles, 06 Mike. Bravo Echo Runway 25 right cleared for the option. 25 right clear for the option. 3 Bravo Echo. a little bit into the wind, kind of this way, because the wind is going to be blowing me closer to the runway. Wind check. 32011. Number 06, Mike, you have your traffic fall in sight. Head into your right, head into your left, load, wings up in the uh, right base the final turn. Uh, zero 06 Mike, I do have traffic, zero 06 Mike. Thanks.
3 Bravo Echo is going to go around. Number 3 Bravo Echo, Roger, right close, traffic approved, runway 25 right clear for the option. Number 06 Mike, number 1, runway 25 right. 06 Mike, clear for 25 right, 06 Mike. Bravo Echo would like to report uh, there's quite a bit of tank right uh, maybe a quarter mile from the end of the runway. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, what's what's a quarter of a mile from the runway? Quite a bit of sink. Sink, okay. Number 06 Mike, did you catch, did you, did you catch that possible low level wind shear? Uh, 06 Mike, I got it, thank you. November 06 Mike, contact ground, point six. Did you notice any uh, wind shear or anything on final? Do you have any problems? I did not. I came in a little higher. Uh, no, no problem. There's a claim. Okay, thank you. Cessna 44 Tango number two behind a Cessna at your 12 o'clock, two miles, turning right base, runway 25 right, cleared to land. Yeah. Okay, number two after the Cessna, looking for traffic, uh, 25 right, 44 Tango. Cessna 3 Bravo Echo, wind 360, uh, runway 25 right, cleared for the option. Cleared for the option, 25 right, uh, 3 Bravo Echo. Livermore Tower, Archer 6344 Charlie with Alpha, about uh, nine miles to the west from uh, Hayward landing. Archer 6344 Charlie, be advised there's a Cessna 8644 Tango on frequency, make right traffic, runway 25 right. Make right traffic, 25 right, 44 Charlie, looking for Cessna. Uh, looking for that traffic, is he on final now, 44 Tango? Cessna 44 Tango, affirmative. If you uh, square your base to final, you should be fine. He's uh, over the approach lights now. I got him, 44 Tango. Limar Tower, Cessna 2173 Zulu, holding short 25 right, looking for a left turnout. Cessna 2173 Zulu, Limar Tower, hold short of runway 25 right. Sagan, your departure request. 73 Zulu, holding short 25 right, and that'll be a right to turn out for 73 Zulu. Archer 44 Charlie, ident and uh, say intentions. Ident and landing. 44 Charlie. Cessna 44 Tango, say parking. Uh, South Hangar 44 Tango. Wind 340 at 15. Is going to exit the runway at Echo. Cessna 3 Bravo Echo, Roger, turn right there and then contact ground point six. Ground point six, 3 Bravo Echo. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what happened there. So, on the way to the airport, the winds were reporting 340 at 4 knots, which is fine. I'm, I was a generally proficient pilot, but I hadn't flown in a crosswind for about six to eight months. So, knowing that I wasn't necessarily crosswind proficient, I figured a 4 knot direct crosswind on runway 25, coming from 340, that's that's 90 degrees, should be a pretty cool like reintroduction into crosswind flying, and it would be a really nice kind of way to refresh myself on all of the proper control inputs for a crosswind landing. When I got to the airport, the winds were pretty mild, and so I recorded my intro spiel, started doing a little bit of the pre-flight, the winds started picking up, didn't seem like they were that bad, but I was also in a sheltered area with a hangar uh, right in front of me and the road right behind me with a line of trees. Got into the plane, got the ATIS 8 knot crosswind. A little bit more substantial than I was expecting, but still not too bad. That's something that I did in my training, so I figured, alright, I'll go up and do a couple of laps with an 8, eight knot crosswind. Shouldn't be a problem. Just before I took off, you saw that the wind increased just, uh, just slightly again. As I took off, the wind increased slightly again. On the first circuit around the pattern, you saw that I overshot my uh, final approach turn, which can be dangerous, especially on two parallel runways, and I was very aware of that uh, situation. I wasn't very far off of my line, but I had definitely overshot runway 25. They weren't landing on 25 left, just 25 right. I corrected, I got back on the on the extended center line of the runway, 
and you saw how much crabbing I was doing into the wind, I had a feeling that the wind was a little bit more substantial than what they were reporting, at least at that altitude. So I was definitely a little bit out of my element on that, especially since during my training, we didn't do any flights above, you know, seven, eight knots. I think my max crosswind component was nine knots, and generally speaking, I wouldn't go flying if the crosswinds were close to that, because it's not very fun. If I'm going to go up with passengers or family, it's not going to be a turbulent, uncomfortable ride, because who wants to go sightseeing when you're getting jostled around the, the whole time? In any case, I still hadn't flown with any kind of a, you know, eight knot or above crosswind component for at least six months, probably closer to eight months at this point. First base to final turn, I uh, got blown off course, and I corrected for it, came in. Right before I got to the runway, I don't know, a quarter mile out maybe, maybe less than that, I hit significant pocket of sink. Uh, I dropped, I want to say 100 feet, I don't think it was 100 feet, but it felt like it because the plane just kind of bottomed out from under me, and, and uh, you see in the video where I kind of float there for a second, and when you're that close to the runway and you hit that kind of a sink, it's a little bit jarring. So rather than attempt to save that landing, I just said, you know, I'm just going to go around. I wanted to do a go around anyway. I've been watching a couple of videos from Bold Method and I think another vlog somewhere about somebody going around and it might have been Air Safety Institute. I think they just released something. So I wanted to practice to go around anyway. This was a perfect opportunity. I hit, I hit sync. I wasn't comfortable with my landing anymore. So I just told the tower I was going to go around. <clears throat> Added full power and the plane didn't react the way I expected it to. I was expecting a little bit of a left turning tendency with the added torque, but the plane just was like bucking to the left. I felt like I had full right rudder in, and I probably didn't, but it really felt like I was jamming on the right rudder to keep the plane aligned with the runway center line and combat the crosswind and keep the slip indicator ball centered. And I was really, really working hard to keep that ball centered. It was continuously drifting to the right as the plane was getting shifted to the left by the wind. Um, weather vaning, I guess, if you will. It wasn't weather vaning because it wasn't turning into the wind. It was actually getting blown to the left. And you can see that in the video. You see the plane kind of rocking back and forth as I'm trying to control it. And that's also why my airspeed goes up. because I, I didn't want to stall, didn't want to spin. Wanted to maintain my airspeed, keep my angle of attack low. In a high wind situation like that, uh, with it also being gusty, ended up raising the flaps, doing my second circuit. As I'm turning final on that one, I still overshot the, the final approach, despite this time consciously making a decision to turn early to let the wind blow me onto the extended center line. Despite that, I still got blown off course. It looks worse in the video than it actually was. I was maybe on the left edge of the runway. I, I was not proficient with crosswinds. I had already decided that uh, I think I was done, assume, assuming I was going to be able to land this one. Uh, otherwise, I was prepared to go around again because unless I'm super comfortable with the landing, I'm always going to go around. That's just safety. I had plenty of fuel. I had just taken off. The 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 plane was airworthy and fine, but uh, I need as stable of an approach as I can get before I can set down the plane. As I'm coming in, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, this is definitely a little bit too strong for me, so I'm not going to get my currency today. I'm going to call the flight when I land. And right at the end, you can see that I get hit by a gust just as I'm coming down and the wing dips and I have to correct for it. And you'll also notice it went from being a direct crosswind to a slight tailwind, a 20 degree tailwind. And I haven't worked out what the, what the crosswind component and what the tailwind component were uh, on that, but I definitely felt like I was coming in fast. I feel like I had a pretty good landing, all things considered. At the end, you kind of see the plane swerve a little bit and that was actually another gust hitting the plane. The plane landed with very little, no side loading. I mean, I had the plane lined up with the runway and I had my crosswind control in and as soon as I put it down, I had full, you know, right aileron and um, was maintaining center line with the rudder and then the plane just goes woof because the wind hits it. And then when the tower says 360 at 15 knots, I was just like, yeah, I'm definitely done. That's the maximum demonstrated crosswind performance of that aircraft which doesn't necessarily mean you can't land any higher than that, but it just means that if you are, you're a test pilot. I didn't feel like being a test pilot, not being proficient with crosswind landings. So called the flight, uh, ended up going back up, uh, actually for an IFR lesson, which uh, video will be coming soon. I had a really good approach at Tracy and a pretty much perfect landing back at Livermore. So I would like to get back up when there's a mild crosswind going at Livermore or maybe even at Concord uh, so I can practice those a little bit more. Definitely caught off guard by how the wind kind of kept increasing and increasing and increasing and it, it caused me to scrub the flight. I was no longer comfortable. I didn't feel like I was having fun. I didn't feel like I was learning anything. I felt like I was just fighting 
I was fighting the plan. Definitely an experience. I would highly recommend staying out <laughs> of situations like that if you can help it. And like I said, as soon as I could, I got out of it. But uh, you got to be prepared for the unexpected. Uh, I was expecting kind of a light crosswind day, especially since the entire rest of the day, the wind component there was, it was, I think, a four knot wind for most of the day, maybe like two to four knots, maybe a couple of five knot reports. And then when I got there, it went, you know, eight, 10, 11, 15. And actually that night it, it became uh, really gusty. And none of that, it wasn't on any you know, forecast for, for that night. It was actually supposed to get calmer as the day went on and it, it did the opposite. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, wanted to put it out there just to kind of show you how things can devolve even on, even on a day when you're expecting good weather or you're expecting fine conditions to go out and go practice. Sometimes the weather's just not gonna cooperate with you. You have to be prepared to deal with it and prepared to say, you know what? I'm at my limit uh, or I'm getting near my limit and I'm not comfortable anymore. So flight scrubbed. Know that you can always call a go around and know that you can always scrub a flight. There's no reason to force yourself to get your currency. I had almost, I had over a month to get my currency uh, renewed and there was no reason for me to stay there. Even if I was expired or getting close to being expired, who cares? You know, go up with an instructor. If you're not comfortable, if, if something's not working right, if, if you just kind of don't feel like you're in the right mindset to be flying, scrub the flight. Safety is always number one. If you enjoyed this video or any of my other content and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Check out my Patreon. I'm actually going to start using their uh, Lens app, which lets you do Instagram style posts and uh, start doing some of my pre-flight things, uh, probably posting them there for patrons. So anybody who contributes will be able to see kind of my process and kind of what I go through. I'm also going to start posting some of the tools that I've kind of built for myself to make flying more enjoyable for me. I have uh, like a custom nav log for VFR flight. I'm probably going to end up creating one for IFR once I start getting a little bit more into that and figure out what kind of a flow works well for me. So all of that content is also going to be up on my Patreon for patrons only. Until next time, fly safe.